Hi, this is Gabe at FluentForever.com. In these three videos, I'm going to show you the bare essentials of phonetics and spelling for Russian. If you're using one of my pronunciation trainers, don't worry about memorizing this stuff. The trainer will do that for you. Just watch and pay attention. Everything you see here will show up sooner or later within the trainer. I'll be going through Russian using the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA. This lets us simplify our discussion a lot. Since I only need to talk about 34 symbols or so, many of which you know already, instead of trying to wade through more than 200 spelling rules. So, let's get started. We'll break this up into three parts. The first will talk about Russian's consonants, the second will cover the vowels, and the third will cover a few of Russian spelling rules. And just so that we're really accurate with our examples, I have a native speaker here, Lilia, who will be helping us out. Hi. Before we get into consonants, though, let's talk a bit about how Russian's writing system, Cyrillic, works. It's pretty straightforward all in all. It just takes a bit of practice to get a hang of. Basically, you're looking at an alphabet of 33 letters. Historically, these letters were based off of the Greek alphabet, and since the Latin alphabet we use for English was also based off of Greek letters, there are going to be a lot of letters that you're going to recognize. So if you know English, you won't need to start from scratch like you might if you were learning one of the Asian or Semitic languages. One of the other nice things about this alphabet is that it's extremely phonetic. Once you learn the sounds and the spelling rules, you can read basically any Russian word accurately, as long as you know which syllable is stressed. For the purposes of these videos, I'll be using example words like this, which means that you're going to be exposed to two new alphabets at once, the Russian alphabet and the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is a bit too much to pay attention to. What I'd suggest is that you focus on the IPA line, there will be more overlap with English, so it'll feel a bit more familiar, and it'll help you focus on the sounds, which is the main goal of these videos. So with that out of the way, let's get started on the Russian consonants. Now, Russian has two versions of almost all of its consonants, a hard version and a soft version. To talk about what that means, we need to talk about a concept known as palatalization, and the easiest way to explain it is through an example from English. So let's talk about that K sound in the words cut, and key. In the word cut, your tongue comes up in the back to meet your soft palate like this. In many ways, this is the defining characteristic of a K. You can't make a K sound with your tongue in some other spot. Nevertheless, the K in cut and the K in key are different. You have K, cut, K, key, K, 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 K. And that second K is higher pitched. And you can see what's going on in your mouth here. When you say key, the back of your tongue does the exact same thing as it did for cut. It has to, or else you're not going to get a K sound. But the middle of your tongue is free to do whatever it wants, and in this case, because a high E sound is coming next, it raises up in anticipation, giving you that higher pitched K sound. This tongue position, with the middle of your tongue raised up near the hard palate, and the back or front of your tongue doing whatever it needs to do to form a consonant, this is palatalization, and you'll see it marked in IPA with a superscript J. In English, we do this with B, P, T, D, K, and G automatically before any E vowels. Now, Russian does the same. Generally, any consonant in front of E will become palatalized or soft, uh, but they also use palatalization in front of other vowels, and sometimes even when consonants come at the end of words, which is why we need to talk about it explicitly instead of just letting you do it automatically. Given all that, let me introduce you to eight familiar sounds in Russian. These are hard, non-palatalized consonants that Russian and English share. And then we'll introduce you to some of the soft or palatalized versions of these same consonants. There's b as in bashnya, f as in fanar, g as in gnom, m as in malina, n as in nasok, s as in saxophone. V as in voron, and Z as in zamok. So now for the soft versions of these same consonants. There's B as in Biblia, F as in Fea, G as in Guitara, M as in Match, N as in Nivesta, S as in Sidlo, V as in Viet, and Z as in Zirkala. There's one more really familiar sounding consonant in Russian. Which is Y as in Russian's yoga or yachta or English's U. This consonant is written as a lowercase j in IPA. 
and you don't have to worry about a soft palatalized version of it because your tongue is already all the way up at your soft palate. There's no place higher you can go. So, now let's talk about five familiar symbols in IPA that sound a little different than you're used to. We'll start with what looks like a D and a T. There's D as in Dracon and T as in Tron. If you're comparing the two Ds between English and Russian, you can compare DEF and DIF. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that in the English word, the very tip of your tongue hits your alveolar ridge, that ridge right behind your front upper teeth. D. DEF. But in Russian, the tip of your tongue flattens out a bit, so that the tip of your tongue actually touches your upper teeth, and the blade of your tongue, that part right behind the tip, touches your alveolar ridge. This gives you a less percussive sound. You get D instead of D. It's exactly the same for Russian's T. Instead of something like ten, you get thin. And that puff of air you get when you say t t ten is also gone. T t thin. That also applies to ts combinations like t as in pizza. You release less air than you would in an English word like pizza. So let's move on to two more consonants that don't have big puffs of air in Russian. There's p as in partfil and k as in kukla. For both of these consonants, the difference between English and Russian is all about that puff of air. In English, there's poof, and in Russian, poof. Poof, 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 poof. Same thing with K. In English, we have ken, k, ken, and in Russian, ken, k, ken. And D, T, K, and P all have soft versions. D as in diagramma. T as in telephone, k as in kist, and p as in pirat. The last of our slightly modified consonants are Russian's hard and soft l's. In English, when we say something like li or l, the back and front of your tongue both will come up towards the roof of your mouth. Li, l. Russian behaves a little differently. The hard l, as in laboratoria, or L, moves up even further in the back, forming a throaty kind of swallowed O. So English has L, Russian has L. L, L. Russian's soft L, in contrast, is low in the back. Giving you words like LI and EL, where only the tip and the middle of the tongue are involved. So English has L and LI, and Russian EL and LI. L, LI, EL. Li. So we have just a few consonants left. We'll start with a consonant that sounds a lot like English's sh, as in chef. Which is Russian's sh, as in chef. If you listen carefully, you can hear that in Russian, the pitch of the consonant drops a bit. Sh goes to sh. To do that, you can take the rounded tongue position of the English's sh and flatten it out. Chef, chef. You can also keep that exact same tongue position and engage your vocal cords. That'll produce z as in zemchuk. To compare the sound to a similar sound in English, we can use jed and jed. J, j. You can also do the reverse. Instead of dropping the pitch of English's sh, instead of going from sh to sh, you can also raise that pitch. Sh, sh. By rounding your tongue even more towards the roof of your mouth, and keeping your tongue tip near your lower teeth. Basically, you're palatalizing the sound. So English has she, Russian she. She, she, sh, sh. You can also stick a T onto that, giving you chi, as in cheese. English has cheese, Russian has cheese. Cheese, cheese, ch, ch. At this point, we've covered most of Russian's consonants. We have four left that will be fairly new for English speakers. So we'll start with the hard and soft Russian R's. The hard version of the R uses a familiar looking lowercase r as its IPA symbol, and it's known as the trilled R. It sounds like r, rosa. For this consonant, your tongue goes right up against your alveolar ridge. It softens a bit to allow air to come through, and as air comes through, it vibrates your tongue up and down against that ridge. There are a lot of tricks for producing this consonant, which you can find all over YouTube. The best one I've heard so far for pronouncing this consonant is to think the phrase Prince of Prussia, 
while you are saying pedins of pedusha. You're replacing all those R's with D's. Then you kind of play around until your tongue starts to cooperate. Pedins of pedasha, prince of prasha, prince of prasha, which can take weeks or even months. This thing can honestly be a bit of a pain to get right. The soft version of this consonant is like the other soft consonants. It's a palatalized version of the hard R. It sounds like R, as in revolver. Usually in part because it's really hard to trill your tongue for a long time with the middle of your tongue raised up so high, you'll get fewer trills in the soft versions. Many times it'll just be a single trill, revolver, not revolver. With the two R's out of the way, we can get to H, as in hockey. To make this sound, bring your tongue up near where you'd say K. But instead of touching your soft palate with the back of your tongue, k, 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 just get close to the soft palate and let air squeeze out. H, h, h. That gives you H, H, K. There's also a palatalized version of this consonant, though it doesn't show up all that often. Mostly just before the E vowel in words like chirurg. You can also engage your vocal cords with your tongue in that exact same spot to make a V sound. This sound has almost exited the Russian language, replaced with a hard G sound. But it still shows up occasionally in a few words. Aha, oho, bur, gospodin, particularly in southern Russia. So you may encounter it from time to time, depending upon who's speaking. And with that, we've covered all of the many, many consonants of Russian. To quickly review, we began with eight familiar consonants that have familiar symbols in IPA. B as in bashnya, F as in fanar, G as in gnom, M as in malina, N as in nasok, S as in saxophon, V as in voron, and z as in zamok. And we covered their soft palatalized versions. B as in biblia, f as in fea, g as in guitara, m as in match, n as in nivesta, s as in sedlo, v as in vetv, z as in zerkala, and we also covered y, as in yoga. Which uses a lowercase j in IPA. Then came five familiar symbols in IPA that sounded a little differently than the sounds you may be used to in English. There was d, as in dracon. A d articulated with the tip of your tongue against your front teeth. T, as in tron, and s, as in pizza. Both articulated in the exact same spot, without any big puff of air like we use in English. Then came P as in Partfil and K as in Kukla. Also without big puffs of air. Soft versions of D, T, K, and P. D as in Diagramma. T as in Telefon. K as in Kist. P as in Pirat. And the two Russian L's. The hard L as in Laboratoria which raises the back of your tongue up a bit higher than you do in English, and the soft L as in L, which brings the tip and middle of your tongue up in your mouth and the back you leave alone. And then came a bunch of consonants that were similar to English's SH. There was SH as in CHEF, which had a lower, flatter tongue position than the English consonant, a voiced version of that Z as in ZEMCHUG, a palatalized version of that, sh, as in she, and a version with a T added, ch, as in cheese. And then came the hard trilled R, r, as in rosa, and the soft palatalized version of that, r, as in revolver. And finally, three versions of the h sound, h, as in hockey, made in the back of your mouth where you pronounce the K. R as in gospodin, made in that exact same spot with your vocal cords engaged, and a palatalized version of h, as in chirurg. And that is it for Russian consonants. Next stop, vowels.